Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Object Oriented Programming. In this episode we're going to look at design patterns. So design patterns are an idea in all programming. We've said before that one of the key goals of Object Oriented Programming is to r reduce software redevelopment. If I have an, a, a software already written, I want to reuse that. So software reuse is one of the most preeminent ideas in all programming. So what design patterns is, is it's a series of solutions to a common set of occurring problems. So it's a set of patterns that if, if you have a kind of problem, this is the kind of code you should write. Normally the design pattern doesn't specify exactly how the code should be written, but it does specify in general it should look like this. So uh, the technical definition, I suppose, it's a general reusable solution to a commonly occurring problem within, within a given context in software design. And uh, as I said, it's not a finished design. I'd almost think of it like pseudocode a little bit. It's, it's more of a, a descriptor or a template. I like that idea. It, design patterns are a series of templates of how to solve a certain kind of problem in a range of situations. So some people argue that design patterns are actually just best practice, formalized best practice that programmers, you take a hundred programmers together and ask them, what's the best way of solving this particular problem? And whatever they come up with, that becomes a design pattern. So in a sense, it's a bit like that. Typically with object-oriented design patterns, you see relationships and interactions between the classes or objects without specifying necessarily the final application classes or objects that are involved, just the interactions between them. What has to talk to what? What message has to pass to whom? And um, definitely the patterns that say states can change might be unsuitable for functional programming, but suitable for all programming. So some patterns can be meh, too much information in some languages because they've already built in support for that. And object-oriented languages sometimes have functionality built in that you don't need the pattern, you just call the library call. But knowing these design patterns is very helpful because they're a set of templates of solutions to problems. Uh, there's a number of different uh, types of design patterns. There's algorithmic strategy patterns and computational design patterns, execution ones, implementation strategy ones, and structural design ones. And we'll, we'll look at, at examples from all of them in some detail. So that's uh, an introduction to design patterns. Thanks very much. We'll see you on the next episode.